Now let's take a look at the ice bank and take a little closer look at the connections. On the back of the ice bank, you'll find a host of different connections and fittings, as well as a thermostat, normally set about six to, to chill down your water. Power switch, circulation switch, which circulates water to your refrigerator, power cord connection, your CO2 inlet, your water outlet, and your water in. You have signal cable connections, one for sparkling water, one for cold water, and then this one is for the milk. This is also a flush line that goes in and flushes the milk. Every time you have a milk drink, you wanna flush the line. You also have a flow meter, which if you want to change or increase the volume of water, you can make that adjustment here. Now that we've flushed our filters, you're gonna notice on the top of your ice bank is it says to fill ice bank. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the water out of our 30% filter and put it into the inlet on the machine. And we're gonna take the outlet for the other 0% head and we're gonna place it into fill. We're then gonna go ahead and turn on our angle stop and turn on our water and tool our fill tube water rises all the way up and in between what's called the high and the low. We want to be right in the middle of there. I would recommend when you get water is getting close to go ahead and turn off the water so any residual water in the line will go ahead and fill up the ice bank without overfilling it and causing a spillage. Inadvertently, if you do happen to overfill it, it simply loosen the tube drop it to the side, pour out your water, as I'm doing here. And that way you can get it back down to, in between the two lines, it's here. This is something you're gonna fill up initially, and then probably not do it again for another year or two. Once we've now filled the water, the ice bank is full, we wanna remove the tube, reinsert our stopper just to limit any evaporation and now this becomes our water in. Remember to push, you meet some resistance and then push a little harder and now you know you've got it locked. So now I have my inlet water for my cold water and I have my inlet water for my coffee. Before we turn the ice bank around and put it in place, let's make our connections. We'll start with power plug followed by our signal cables. We have a signal cable for water as well as sparkling water. The cables are identical, so I go ahead and I make a mark on them so I know which is which. One for sparkling water, and I put a little O on it, and one for cold water and this one here is for your milk which is the milk pump that goes right actually inside the uh, refrigerator and then this is our flush line which will go right into the machine we have a couple more connections we've got our outlet water connection and our CO2. And that goes right into that nominometer meter that we came with the filter kit. We want to add our little lock rings. And we're going to use those, mostly you just use those on water connections. One for the water out and one for the water in. Now we're completely dressed, we can now turn the machine around and the refrigerator facing out. One last step before turning the machine around is make sure that your circulation motor is in the on position. And you can also turn the ice bank on as well, because once we plug it in, then power's on and you're not reaching behind the unit.